Hello everyone, welcome to Cooking Miss Carlson. Today we're going to be making some banana bread, and I don't want to do any of the mashing, but the bananas. But the cracking of the egg. Yeah, but the cracking of the egg. We're actually making banana cake today. Oh, not banana bread. Okay. So this banana cake, we're going to uh, make just a 9 by 13 inch banana cake, nice. but we're going to top it with my all-time favorite frosting. What type it's, of frosting? It's cooked frosting. Oh, it's so good. Wait, it's cooked in the oven? No, you cook it on the stove top. But first we need to make our cake so that that can cool. So we're going to get started by, I think you should practice mashing, by mashing three ripe bananas. Ew, ripe. Okay. Um, also one of your first steps should be to uh, get some buttermilk oh. going too. Unless you have buttermilk, but I don't typically buy buttermilk. I just make it uh, on my own. Oh, that's so gross. Okay. So you're going to need one and a half cups of milk and about a tablespoon of vinegar, just white vinegar. And all you do is put the vinegar in, stir it up a little bit, and then we're going to let that just sit out until we're ready to use it. You should typically let this sit for a few minutes just so that the milk can curdle a little bit and turn into some buttermilk. All right, so we'll set that aside. Since Rachel doesn't want to mash our bananas, I'll do that. Ew, 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 ripe bananas. Oh. Ripe bananas are the sweetest bananas. Ew. That's why we use ripe bananas to make cake and bread and cookies. And, and eelness. See, they're perfect because you don't want to eat them anymore because they're too ripe, but they're perfect for sweet desserts. Alright, so I'm just mashing up three bananas with my fork. We'll set that aside for a little bit. Then we're going to start creaming our butter and sugars together. So for this recipe, you need three quarters of a cup of softened butter. I just put my sticks of butter into the microwave and put them on the softened setting for about 30 seconds or so. And that's good enough. If you have them, if you have time, you can let them sit up on your counter for a little while and they'll soften up as well, but this is a quicker option. Okay, we need one cup of regular sugar. I'm staying back here until you um, when, until you tell me when the eggs are ready oh, to crack. Oh, until it's time for the eggs, huh? Yes. All right, so we're adding one cup of sugar to three quarters of a cup of our butter. We need a half of a cup Should be packed brown sugar. And then we're going to uh, mix those up until the sugar is kind of incorporated into the butter and you've got a light and fluffy mixture. I'm going to do that right now for a couple of minutes and then we'll join you back here. All right, after you have your butter and sugar all whipped together with your mixer, we need three eggs for this yeah. recipe. Yes, that might be the most. Oh, God. Okay, so we'll get this out of the way. Okay, okay. so you can crack, yep, all three of these eggs this butter in, in this bowl. That's fine. Um, while she does that, I'm going to mix the dry ingredients into this bowl. So we need three cups of flour. You do want your dry ingredients to be measured in a separate bowl because we're going to gradually add that into the wet ingredients. Okay, where do I put the cracking? Um, you can just put them all in that bowl for right now. Okay, so we have three cups of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of baking soda each. How are the eggs coming? teaspoon of cinnamon and a half of a teaspoon of salt in this Six. recipe. I got cinnamon and sugar. Well, there's lots of sugar in the part of this already. There we go. Got it? You can carry the eggs to the other side. Yeah, but um, I didn't, my hands were That's all right. so I didn't have time to cook the eggs. That's okay. Half of a teaspoon of salt, half of a teaspoon of cinnamon. 
And we're just going to take our measuring spoon and mix those dry ingredients together just so your baking soda and your salts, baking powder, and cinnamon just get incorporated into all that flour. All right, so Rachel has cracked three eggs for us. Yep, and now I'm going to do the outside. Hmm. Do the fun part, huh? Okay, and we'll put our three eggs into our sugar and butter. Whip that up and then add our vanilla. We need two teaspoons of vanilla for this recipe. All right, so whip this up for a couple of minutes. The trick to getting your cake really light and moist is to make sure that you beat the eggs and the sugar and the butter up at a very high speed. And then when you add your flour, you're not over mixing the flour. So to do all of the heavy beating, make sure you're just doing that when you have your butter and sugar together. All right, so we're adding two teaspoons of vanilla to this. We're going to whip this up and then add our bananas. We'll whip this up and then we're going to do an alternation of into thirds. We'll put a third of the flour mixture in, a third of the buttermilk, a third of the flour, a third of the buttermilk, and so forth until it's all gone. Our banana, vanilla, eggs, sugar, brown sugar, and butter all mixed together. Now you're going to take your flour, you don't have to measure this, but again, do about a third of the flour mixture. Just mix that up just until it's incorporated into the banana mixture. Then we're going to add about a third of the cup of our buttermilk. And then we'll repeat that process two more times until this is all mixed together. After you have beat up your dry ingredients and your buttermilk, alternating between the two ingredients, we're going to get out a 9 by 13 inch pan and just spray that pan. And then you will pour your banana cake batter into your pan. Uh, you're going to cook this for about 45 minutes or so at 350 degrees. Just make sure you're checking it. I'll probably check mine at 40 minutes to make sure that it's not um, cooked then. Um, this may cook pretty fast at the end, so just be watching it. All right, we're going to spread this out, and then we'll come back here to make our cooked frosting after this as baked. Okay, well our cake is baking, we're going to get the first steps of our frosting ready. So what you're going to need is one cup of milk and four tablespoons of flour. Okay, so this is where that cooked aspect comes into play. You're going to put your one cup of milk into a saucepan on the stove. This can just be a small saucepan. And then you're going to whisk together the milk and the four tablespoons of flour. What do you think of that for frosting? Hmm. I didn't really hear anything. I was just playing with the putty over here. Mm -hmm. Do you think that sounds good? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear anything. Milk and flour. That's going to be our base. Uh, no. So what you're going to do is just whisk this together until it boils. And then it, watch it very, very carefully because it's going to get incredibly thick very fast. Wait, wait. Why does it matter if it's thick or not? We want it to be thick. This is this is what's going to be the thickener for our frosting when we add the sugar and the butter later. Um, but this is the cooked aspect of it. Oh, I see, I see. So just whisk this on your stove until it thickens. I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all thickened, but you, you'll know when it's done, it thickens very fast. Okay, so you'll see once this starts to boil, it gets very, very thick. That's the consistency you're looking for. We're going to pull that off of the heat and then you're going to want to put this right into the refrigerator to let it cool before we mix in our butter and sugar. We let our cake bake for about 42 to 43 minutes and we pulled it out and let it set on this wire rack. You wanna make sure that you let this cool completely before you put your frosting on. This has been sitting out for about an hour. While that was sitting out, we also let our flour and milk mixture that we cooked on the stove cool completely in the refrigerator. So this is pretty cold now and, and set. Now what you need are two sticks of butter 
Um, these should be softened. So if, if you pull your butter out of the refrigerator, make sure you soften it in the microwave. Then we're going to add one cup of sugar, just white sugar, to the two sticks of butter. And you want to beat this up until this is all mixed together. All right, once you cream your butter and sugar together, you're going to spoon in, and this is going to be very thick, your flour and milk mixture. Okay, so you have to scrape this out of your saucepan, and then just put this in. We're also going to add some vanilla to this, um, but one teaspoon of vanilla. just whip those ingredients together. You're going to want to whip that frosting on the highest speed your mixer has for about a minute or so until that's all mixed together. And then you are ready to spoon your light and fluffy frosting on top of your cake. Uh, I use this frosting a lot for my pumpkin cake. It is absolutely delicious. Wait, did we do the pumpkin cake too? This is a banana cake. No, did we do a pan? Uh, we haven't done a pumpkin cake yet. We'll have to do that one too. Okay. All right. So that is all there is to putting together a banana cake with some cooked frosting.